All right. Welcome back to episode number four. And in this it, of X Men Classics. And in this episode, we're reviewing the fourth issue of The X Men. Where in this issue, it's a debut, it's the return of Magneto and the debut of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. And in this issue, the following characters make their debut in this issue. Quicksilver, Scarlet Witch, Mastermind, and Toad. Basically, that's the whole point of this issue. Bring back Magneto, basically, and this is the first time since issue one he's actually appeared. So it's nice the fact that Stan Lee brought him back because I'm sure that probably at the time he probably got a positive reception. And also, interesting little thing about this issue uh, in the previous issue. It's, we're already in 1964 when it comes to the X-Men publication. I mean, it's been a couple months since the previous issue can come out, though I just did the other one. Um, like, th at this point in time, from this issue up until issue 11... The book becomes ser well, basically from issue, from this issue up into issue eleven, uh, from issues four through nine and issue eleven, it's known. I call this particular set of issues the first Brotherhood saga. That's why I call it. It's a nice name. I mean, it covers a good chunk of issues. I don't count issue ten because that is just kind of a standalone this issue, alongside with the Brotherhood saga. That's simply the way it is. This issue opens up like the last few issues have done, with a training exercise in the danger room, of all things. And here's some artwork by Jack Kirby. After they complete their exercises, they have some cake. Yes, cake. Which Cyclops uses his optic blast to uh, use his laser eyes to cut the cake. No, he has a problem with it. And then the thing just... And then we cut away to the headquarters of the Brotherhood. Where we see the debut of the four characters to make debut in this issue. We have Toad, Quicksilver, Scarlet Witch, and Mastermind. And the first thing Quicksilver does in this, pa in this panel... He criticizes Toad for chewing, chewing his mouth open. Yeah. Now, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch are in fact brother and sister. Though, for some strange reason, sometimes Toad refers to them as mutant lovers. I don't know why. Despite the fact these two are actually related, he mistakenly refers to them as lovers. Now, I got a hand to Jack the King Kirby. For drawing the Scarlet Witch like this. Because the Scarlet Witch... Well, whenever you see Scarlet Witch, a lot of the time it looks like she's wearing a swimsuit along with her pinkish outfit. Yeah. As for Quicksilver, uh, the overall design of his outfits hasn't really changed all that much over the years. He still has the lightning bolt. He still has that. That lightning bolt has not really changed over the years. The suit has. As for Wanda, her outfit does not change for 20 years. That is not a joke. She keeps the same exact outfit into the 1980s when they finally give her an update. Well, at least maybe until the 90s. They, they have her keep the same outfit for years. Toad, yeah, he goes to a few different outfits. But Mastermind himself, like, he does return later on during Chris Claremont's run. Uh, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch are very rarely in the book after the, after the first brother's song is completed. After, uh, basically, um... Mastermind basically uses his powers. Now, what are these guys' power sets? I mean, Quicksilver is a speedster, obviously. Uh, Scarlet Witch has hex powers. That was never revealed at this point. It's never revealed many years later that these two are the children of MacNeil. Though, Rick Renner has done retcon during Access, which I think was stupid. Anyways, uh, after Mastermind scoffs at um toad interesting note about mastermind he's actually older than almost everybody except magneto himself i mean the guy himself is drawn to be very ugly
And he's drawn that way on purpose because Jack the King Kirby wants him to be but ugly. So the basically they just scuffle, that they just argue amongst themselves. That's what they do for the first few pages when they first show up. And then finally Magneto shows up. Six pages in. He finally shows up in here. And he just tells him, oh, he's going to be doing, he's going to be, like, uh, he's going to be stealing a freighter. And, of course, to make a reference to issue one. And uh, he plans to steal a freighter. And, of course, uh, Xavier doesn't immediately suspect that Magneto has returned, but he does suspect there's something wrong in a freighter. Of course, he can't manually detect Magneto because of his helmet. is blocking his uh, telepathic powers. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, one thing good about this issue, it does kind of give also, not only is this the first appearance of Quicksilver Scarlet Witch, basically, it gives not exactly their origin story per se, more like how Magneto first met them. Basically, in Europe, basically... Some villagers accused to be a witch. They were going to kill her. So Magneto stops them. And uh, he saves Wanda's life. And in return, Quicksilver basically goes with her. In order to protect her. She's, he's That's basically what it is. And one thing I should note, though. This is the first headquarters of the Brotherhood of the Emuans. Which they, this is one of their several base operations they had. There's no real explanation exactly why they keep changing it. Probably because they, probably because the X-Men was going to find that by the way. So, because the fact that um, this small little republic that he reads about on paper, and of course there's no daily, uh, daily Vigo does show up, it, but he's reading the daily record both. It's probably, that, that I don't know why Stanley doesn't allow Daily Vigo to appear in a lot, a lot of the comics at this point, but... They got some paper in there. So he calls them to the meeting, and they'll switch their costumes, and then Xavier has a telepathic conversation with Magneto, which... Okay. Now, if you look at this in modern eyes, basically, when it comes to um, how Magneto is written, normally Xavier cannot do this at all, but, but this is not a telepathic conversation. This is basically Magneto and Charles Xavier speaking on the astral plane. That is simply what it is. So, he does figure out that um, Magneto has returned, obviously. And he sends the X-Men out to stop them. And then somehow, basically, uh, with somehow convincing an entire, ar well, actually the army is just an illusion. Yeah. But look at this army. Like thinking though, how in the world did Magneto for his arm? Nope, nope, it's not an army. It's basically Mastermind's illusion. Basically, he uses this entire army to take over this entire country. Sorry for the silence, but I'm just looking for something to talk about. Uh, so, so they go to this country and they take out the other people. Uh. They take out the illusions, and they finally meet the Brotherhood and take them on. And it's a good fight scene, per se. Um, but as, as still at this point, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch are still villains at this point. They're not heroes. They don't become heroes until after issue 11. Basically, Quicksilver tries to stop uh, Cyclops to take out Magneto. Um... But he takes out this little machine, and then everybody flees. This machine kind of blows up somewhat, and the machines run outside. And there's some stuff throwing around. There's a fire. But um, I'm trying to describe this issue best I can. But it's a very well-gripped and exciting issue, per se, yes. And... So, they fight for a while. Xavier just falls off his chair, tries to stop them, and 
The Brotherhood do get away, but they do free this country from Magneto's tyranny. And honestly, that is it. Really, that's it. So, what I think of this issue overall for the first part of the Brotherhood saga. Um, this issue was really good. Very gripping. I'm sorry for my pauses, but I'm trying to look for something good to talk about. But, suffice it to say, first good issue since issue one. Nothing against the previous two issues, but this issue is definitely proven. Or the previous two issues. So, with this issue overall, it's got great fighting, great character development for, and, and, and great introduction to great uh, characters who later be a factor over the years. Like how Toe becomes later on, becomes a janitor at the Gene Gray School for Higher Learning. Mastermind himself, uh, basically, is for, he, he's around for about 20 years after this. Before uh, Chris Claremont just basically just gets rid of him. Actually, more like 30 years. He's right. He's the only one of the four who was not currently alive today in the comics. The only one of the five who who shows up as part of this. Who, the only one of the four who make their debut in this issue to, to, who is no longer alive. He dies by succumbing to the legacy virus that was a big factor in the 90s. Yes. But he is also the father of two very gorgeous women, if you've if you ever seen... Mastermind and Lady Mastermind. Those were his two daughters. And apparently he also had a third daughter. The uh, X-Men member Pixie. Is also one of his daughters as well. This was revealed in the Pixie Strikes Back series. As for Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. They later on afterwards. Very famously. Almost any comic fan knows this. Basically the following year. They leave the Brotherhood. And basically join the Avengers. Which have become prominent members in, for years. Toad himself would just stay in the X-Men books for years. He would go into some other books related to the X-Men, but he never would uh, fight any other um, characters outside of the X-Men comics. So, for this issue, I give X-Men number four a 9 out of 10. So, until then. So, until I do my next episode, which we'll be reviewing... Issue number five and part two of the Brotherhood Saga. Until then, see you there. Bye.